What's going on YouTube? Matt Downs with Daily Grind Fantasy Sports and in this video we're going to go over something called the correlation strategy for fantasy sports and how to exploit the books while using positive correlation within your slips. And the great thing about the correlation strategy is that anybody can use it. It really is a foolproof strategy to exploit the books. If you take a look around the industry, guys like Trident who's made over $12,000 in just one month using the correlation strategy, again, it is almost foolproof. And in this video, we're gonna go over the basics of positive correlation, what that even means, and then how it translates to profit in fantasy sports. And more importantly, I'm gonna be showing you the exact edge and why this is so profitable on apps like Prize Picks, Underdog, and any fixed payout platform. And if you stay to the very end of this video, I'm gonna break down everything that you need to know about the correlation strategy, including the FAQs, the frequently asked questions about why this works, how it works, and how to set up slips yourself. So the first thing to break down is what exactly is positive correlation? For all you math nerds out there, you know exactly what it is. But for anybody who doesn't know about positive correlation in fantasy sports, it's as simple as this. Two independent variables within the same game that positively affect the outcome of another. For instance, to break it down in layman's terms, let's take a look at Patrick Mahomes, right? He's obviously going to be passing the ball to Travis Kelsey. He's going to positively impact the overall performance of Travis Kelsey depending on how he performs as well. Patrick Mahomes throwing the football for a lot of yards is probably going to result in Travis Kelsey catching a majority of those passing yards, right? And it really is that simple. Those two players are positively correlated. But two players from the same team don't always have to be positively correlated for overs. They're also positively correlated for unders, right? So if you take Patrick Mahomes and he stinks it up, let's say in this upcoming AFC Championship game, well, that probably also means that Travis Kelsey is going to stink it up as well. Like they're probably both going to hit their unders. Or at least there's a higher likelihood that both of those players are going to affect affect the outcome of one another. So if Patrick Mahomes stinks, then there's a higher likelihood that Travis Kelsey is also going to stink. But if he does well, there's a higher probability that Travis Kelsey is also going to do very well within that same game. And now let's talk about the next topic. How does this translate to fantasy sports? Sure, we can put positively correlated players in the same slip, but how do we know that we're going to profit by doing so? And that's the first piece of advice I tell all my people when they positively correlate plays together is that it's never guaranteed, right? It just simply increases the odds for that slip to hit. And more importantly, it increases the odds more so enough than it would if you put this into another parlay on a traditional sports book. On a fantasy app, you're increasing the odds more so, and because they're a fixed payout platform, it becomes a profitable long-term edge. So the edge then becomes simply the fact that fixed payout platforms like prize picks do not alter their payouts in most scenarios, regardless of the combination of players that you put together. This increases the organic percent for this entire slip to hit, while on traditional sports books, they penalize you for including same players within the same game because it's a single game parlay. And to help you better understand exactly what I'm talking about from a mathematical perspective, let's look at a couple examples. As you can see on Boom Fantasy, with this positively correlated slip, using all players from the same game with all overs, right? We take a look at Patrick Mahomes. He is positively correlated with some of his other star wide receivers, like Travis Kelsey, like we already talked about earlier in the video. But we also take a look on the opposing side, Lamar Jackson over passing yards, right? Imagine this game is a shootout. Both passing attacks are gonna be used a lot in this exact game script, right? If Patrick Mahomes is throwing the ball a lot and scoring a lot of points, that means Lamar Jackson also has to keep up with the pace and throw the ball downfield a lot more often. This group of players is positively correlated. There are exactly five players in this exact slip that are positively correlated with one another. But let's pay attention to the actual edge here. Boom Fantasy, a fixed payout platform similar to prize picks, does not alter their payouts based on the correlation within the same game as you can see here in the slip. And to further prove that some payouts never change based on the combination of players, let's actually now include a negatively correlated play here within the same slip. Scantling, let's go ahead and take his under receiving yards with Patrick Mahomes over passing yards. As you can see here in the screenshot, the payouts still never change. So now there's a less edge on this exact same kind of slip on Boom Fantasy with five players, but there's more of an edge now with the positively correlated slip, but the payouts are still the same. Now let's take this exact type of slip, this exact same single game parlay, literally the exact same player props, 
and transition, move it over to a FanDuel single game parlay. See if we get the exact same kind of payouts. As you can see here in this FanDuel slip, we have Lamar Jackson over passing yards. We have Patrick Mahomes over passing yards, Odell Beckham, Justin Watson, and then Travis Kelsey over receiving yards, right? But as you can see here, because it's so positively correlated, it's not nearly paying out as much. $100 would pay you out just over $1,100. But if we compare this to the fixed payout platform on Boom Fantasy, the exact same buy-in pays out 1,900 odds, a 20x payout. And just to show you, to further prove the negative correlation between under receiving yards and over passing yards, I took Justin Watson and I changed him to an under 15.5 receiving yards in my, my payout went up, right? My payout increased. Further proving that the negative correlation does in fact alter the payouts on a traditional sports book. But again, the edge is incredible. By just playing on a fixed payout platform like Boom Fantasy with the exact same type of single game parlay, you're exponentially increasing your percent odds to hit and receiving an overall better payout. Now, the major burning question is how do we exactly know that these Boom Fantasy slips are still profitable? Traditional sports books like FanDuel and DraftKings, they alter their payouts to diminish the edge against their sports bettors. The sports bettors have little to no edge for single game parlays, period. And that's simply because they account for the additional edge that is added when you put positively correlated player props together in a single slip. Whereas fantasy apps clearly do not bake that into their odds. The edge is simply determined by how positively correlated two players or even a whole group of players are in the same slip. Do those correlation coefficients outweigh the implied odds that are given to you on any fantasy platform like Boom Fantasy, Prize Picks, Underdog? And a really good test is always comparing directly back to those traditional sports books like DraftKings and FanDuel when they alter those payouts. Does it drastically differ from that of a fantasy app? In the example I showed you, yes, it does. So that's usually a good indication that, hey, I've got a profitable long-term slip here. The next question I get is, well, if NFL is this correlated, how many other sports are actually this profitable? And honestly, the list goes on and on, depending on how many player props and leagues are offered on these fantasy platforms. For instance, you got little sports like League of Legends, CS2, and those sports are actually extremely correlated. You take, for instance, CS2, which is previously CSGO, right? And you have player kills. The longer that those maps continue on, the more correlated players within the same game are actually for their overs or unders, right? So the shorter the game, the more positively correlated the unders are for that exact matchup. But again, that's just one of many examples. Other sports include, like I said, League of Legends. We have Call of Duty. We have NHL. We have MLB. The list goes on and on. Soccer. And then the next question becomes, how many of these profitable slips are you able to enter and how can you take advantage of these lack of correlation rules across all these various DFS platforms. Some fantasy platforms like PrizePix and Underdog are more strict with their correlation rules than let's say a smaller DFS app like Boom Fantasy, like Dabble, like Better. But the main takeaway is that each one of these fantasy apps offer a different variety of correlation rules that they restrict from their user base. And it's up to you, the viewer, to find out these exact restrictions and then find out what edge you're able to exploit depending on the leagues that are offered, player props, and it just completely depends on the DFS platform and how many leagues that they offer. So for instance, at the time of recording this video, there are currently 11 different fixed payout fantasy apps that you can take advantage of while exploiting the positive correlation strategy. I will take all those links from the various fantasy apps and post them in the description below. So just to give you a rough idea of what positive correlation looks like across various sports and what edges you're able to take advantage of, we're going to walk through some examples together. The tool I'm going to be using today is called the Daily Grind Fantasy Correlation Tool. And all this tool does is it scans the market, it scans every single player prop across various fantasy apps and across various markets to show you the most profitable, most correlated slips together. And it literally shows you the entire slips. So for instance, if I went down the list um, on the left here, you can see the fantasy app, but then it also shows the entire uh, player prop group that you should be selecting together. And then it takes it a step further. It shows it shows you based on the, the correlation rule restrictions, what the profit margin would be if you entered this on this app. For instance, I know that Underdog Fantasy doesn't allow over passing yards together um, from opposing quarterbacks, but they allow passing touchdowns paired with over pass passing yards, which is also extremely correlated. And again, this just shows you how profitable the slip is by comparing directly to the traditional sports books. Same thing here, it shows you receiving targets. This happens to be a very soft 
um, player prop projection, um, Scantling over three targets rather than maybe his receptions prop or his receiving yards. And that's what this correlation tool does is it scans the entire market, finds the individual edge on all these player props, and then shows you the most correlated combo of players, which is a cheat code. Um, to show you guys how this works and why it works, we actually publicly track every single slip uh, we grade every single slip automatically from the correlation tool. If you had been tailing every single slip recommended um, from August 18th of last year, you would be up 847 units, which is for a $10 better, that is $8,000 plus in less than just five months. So again, that's just for a $10 better. Imagine if you were a $100 better, that would be over a full-time salary, of course. So again, this just shows you, right now we have a bunch of NFL, um, and it really depends the timing of the day. We have a CS2 slip down here. And again, Underdog just allows you to pair two up to two players from each CS2 matchup. And it shows you here, hey, these are really soft props from this matchup. You should be hitting the over on Flames and Jabby. And then from the other matchup here, um, again, the reason why we can't stack an entire game is because underdog restricts that but we're also showing you hey if you enter the slip it's still extremely profitable the next question i get asked often is when do the most correlated positive correlated slips occur when are the most profitable opportunities going to happen throughout the day and i'll just tell you right now it really depends on the season right if nfl is one of the most correlated sports then obviously you know throughout nfl season there's going to be a lot of profitable highly correlated slips within nfl same thing with nhl mlb right so it really just depends on the season and keep in mind the daily grind fantasy correlation tool updates every second of every day to find you the most aggressive or most soft individual player props to include together for a highly profitable correlated slip so i know that's not a straightforward answer but it really just depends another frequently asked question that i get is how should i manage my bankroll and this can get quite out of hand very early, especially if you're an inexperienced better. When you're playing parlays, obviously you don't have a high percent chance to hit any kind of player or any kind of parlay, right? If you're playing straight bets, you obviously have a higher chance to hit a 50-50 prop than you do five or six individual 50-50 player props. The percent odds to hit for any type of parlay within that 50-50 range is going to be anywhere from that three to 10% range, which means you're going to sweep a five or six leg parlay about three to 10% of your time. So think about this logically. Why would you ever put more than 10% of your bankroll on any specific slip that is positively correlated enough to keep you profitable, of course? My general rule of thumb is that you should never enter more than 1% of your bankroll on each individual slip when utilizing the strategy. Another question I get asked very often is what if these player props change? What if I have a positively correlated slip, let's say Lamar Jackson over 212.5 passing yards, but then that then bumps down to 210.5. Should I re-enter that slip? Well, the answer is no, you should never double dip. You should never overexpose yourself to individual player props, especially if they're the exact same player market, right? If I double dip and I say, all right, I'm going to take the over of 212 with the uh, other five combination of players within that same slip, then why would I then pivot, take that exact same slip with only a two yard discount, right? If that slip misses, if that game ends up being, you know, a very defensive matchup, all those players are more likely to go under. So you're just going to lose both slips that you entered and you'd be overexposing yourself to an exact group of players. This next question I get asked often. What if your sportsbook account gets limited because you're making so much money off this profitable strategy? And the answer is that is honestly just part of the game. If you're going to make money and you're going to take money from a sports book or fantasy app, well, then they're going to try to limit your upside there. That's how the sports books and fantasy apps stay in business. And that's why my top recommendation is to always increase your portfolio of fantasy apps where you're able to take advantage of this strategy. I talked about 11 and that portfolio is only going to grow. We're in a booming market of fantasy apps where they're also trying to make a lot of money off their sports betters, off their fantasy betters, and it's just the best way to stay long-term profitable. You're gonna get limited regardless of if you're a profitable sports better and through the correlation strategy or if you're plus EV betting, line comparing, that's just a part of the game. And it has nothing to do with the strategy, it has everything to do with being a profitable long-term better. This is not 
a strategy problem. This is a sports book and fantasy app problem. So I know this video was a lot to take in. We went over the positive correlation strategy, went over all the sports where you can be positively profitable. Um, but then we also went over some frequently asked questions that I get often and hopefully alleviated some of that pressure from the sports books or fantasy apps possibly limiting your account. Um, guys, I'm here to tell you that it is 1000% possible to remain a profitable long-term sports better. Whether you're playing correlation, positively correlation, or you're line comparing, we teach everything here at Daily Grind Fantasy Sports. Let's hopefully help you now make money. If you guys have any questions, I'll link my, my email in the description below. Feel free to email me whenever. I'm here to help you out. Have a great rest of your day, guys, and let's make some money.